Installing the Smart Center Server. In the previous video, we installed and we configured our first gateway, and now we'll need to install a Smart Center Server so that we can start managing our gateways. Now, this machine that I'm on right now is a Windows 2003 R2 server, the 32 bit edition, and I've already gone ahead and I've dropped the Checkpoint CD in the drive and it'll display the splash screen like you see here. So we'll need to click on the forward button and then we'll need to accept the terms laid out in the license agreement and then click the forward button again. Now we'll be installing the Checkpoint Power product so we're going to leave the default as it is here and click forward. Now here we have three installation options. We have a demo version, a new installation and an installation using a pre-existing configuration file if you already have one. Now this defaults to a new installation and that's what I'm going to choose so we'll click the forward button again. Okay now what sort of components do we want to install on this server? Since it's going to be our smart center server I'm going to uncheck VPN1 power and we'll leave both the smart center and the smart console selected. I'm not going to worry about these other things here for now. We'll just click the forward button. Now this is our first smart center server, so it will be the primary one. Although notice that we can set up secondary ones as well as log servers. But for now we're only interested in our first smart center server, our primary one, so we'll leave the default and click forward. Now we can choose to install the plugin for Connectra NGX devices as well if we like and why not we'll leave it checked we'll click forward and we'll get a quick summary here telling us that we're installing both the smart center primary server and the smart console so we'll click forward and then the installation will begin by firing up another short wizard where firstly we can choose where we want to install the product so I'm going to accept the default path here of Windows firewall 1 R65 and we'll click next and now the files will be copied over to our server. Then this will take a couple of minutes so I'm going to pause the video here and we'll return in a moment. Alright well the first part's done so we're going to click OK. Now this will start up another wizard which asks us to define where we'd like to install the smart console to so I'm going to accept the default path here of program files checkpoint smart console R65 and we'll click next and we'll leave all the defaults as you see them to install all of these components here which is going to take around 200 meg of disk space and we'll click next and then the installation will begin. Now again we're going to pause the video here and we'll be back in a moment. Alright it's done and we're asked if we want to create smart console shortcuts on our desktop. Why not? We'll say yes and we're done here now so we'll click on OK and then we'll click finish. Now the next step in our installation is to configure checkpoint with our licenses. So we've got several ways of setting up licensing. We could choose to use a license that we already have contained in a file or we could click on the add button and then add in the details of our license here or you could just set up a free 15 day trial license if you have one from Checkpoint. So I'm going to click next for now since I'm really not that keen on sharing my license with the world and I'm sure Checkpoint themselves wouldn't be all that keen either. Now we will get a message here telling us that we don't have any licenses. Are we sure we want to continue? For now I'm just going to say yes. Okay well now we'll need to specify administrators that are allowed to log into the GUI and make changes. So we're going to click the add button and we'll need to enter in a username and a password. No surprises there. So for the username I'm going to use the username of CP admin for checkpoint admin and we'll enter in a password and I'm going to type it in again just to confirm it and then we'll click OK and there's our account added and of course we can add in more if we like I'm not going to worry about that for now I'm happy with just one administrator account we'll click next now here we'll need to enter in the IP address of our clients that are allowed to log in to our smart center server 
Now, since I'm logging in directly on this server, I don't have to enter in anything here, but let's just add it in anyway so you understand what we need to do. So we'll need to enter in an IP address of 10.0.0.71, which is the IP address of this machine. But equally here, I could be adding in the IP address of my own local workstation. Once we've entered it in, we'll click Add, and then we'll just repeat that process for any other remote IP addresses that will need to log into this server. So we'll click Next, and the wizard will need to configure an internal certificate authority which will have the same name by default as the host name of our server, which is CP Smart Center. So there's nothing to do here, just click Next. And it was successfully initialized as suggested here, so we'll click on OK. And finally, we're going to be presented with this fingerprint, which is a long line of three and four letter words, although they're nice four letter words. And this is what clients will use to identify that they are in fact connecting to the Smart Center server and not a different machine that's trying to impersonate our Smart Center server. So we can export this fingerprint to a file if we like and although it's not really required, let's do it anyway. So we'll click export and we'll give the file a name. Let's just call it fingerprint and I'll save this in my My Documents folder. That's fine. We'll click save and then we'll click finish and thank you for installing Checkpoint Software. You're welcome. So welcome in fact that once we click finish, we'll be told that we need to reboot this machine. So we'll say yes, and then we'll pause the video and we'll be back shortly once our machine is back up and running. Okay, we're back a quick reboot later and we're now ready to roll and begin the process of configuring Checkpoint. So over here on the left, we're going to double click on the Smart Dashboard icon. And we're going to need to enter in three things here to log in. We're going to need to enter in our username, the password, and the name or the IP address of the Smart Center server that we want to log in to. So our username is cpadmin, our password that we created a moment ago, and the host name of our Smart Center server which I simply called CP Smart Center with an extra E there. And then we'll click OK. And here you can see we're then presented with our fingerprint, which we saw earlier. And we can verify that this fingerprint here is in fact correct by simply going and opening up our fingerprint file that we exported. And we've got that here, and that's simply just a text file. So I'll open it with WordPad. Okay, and if I just bring this down so we can compare the two, rule T, cog, gray, rule T, cog, gray. So we're looking like these two things match. And of course, if they do, then this smart center server must be the real deal and not some other machine trying to impersonate this server. So it's okay to connect. We'll click approve. And we're in. Smart center is installed and we're ready to begin configuring our rules and our policies which we'll begin doing in the next video. In this video, we've seen how to install the Checkpoint Smart Center Server components and perform the initial login. Now that our gateway and our Smart Center Server components are installed, we can move on to the next video in this series where we can begin creating policies. So we hope you've enjoyed this video and we'd like to thank you for watching.